parts that differ by at least three. So you take partitions into parts that differ by at least three, and you look at gaps between the parts, which are more than three. Okay? There is a ghost part, which is minus one. For the smallest gap, you have to sum up. There is a technicality here, and I won't get into that. If this partition has k gaps, which are more than three, the weight of the partition is one plus z to the k, z to the number of parts. That's the, part, that's the weight attached to the partitions with gap at least three. The weight attached to partitions in the distinct part, that's coming from the product, is simply z to the number of parts. So the theorem is, if I now count partitions into distinct parts according to the number of parts with weight z, that is the same as going to the subset of partitions and counting it with weight 1 plus z power k, z to the new. Okay. This is actually a very interesting theorem. I just want to show you one consequence. Suppose I put z equal to 1. Then that means I'm counting the partitions with gap at least 3 between the parts with weights which are powers of 2. Okay, so that means I have a 2 adic identity representing partitions into distinct parts in terms of these powers of 2. And now I pose the following problem. Go back to Euler's pentagonal numbers theorem. You have split partitions into distinct parts into two subsets. And these two subsets are of the same size except for the pentagonal numbers. So what does that mean? It means that the number of partitions into distinct parts is even except at the pentagonal numbers where it is all. So it's almost always even. So now again I'm the student in the theory of partitions. And I asked Professor Basil Gordon, my teacher, Sir, would it not be natural to conjecture that the number of partitions in the distinct parts is almost always a multiple of four? How about it's almost always a multiple of eight? Almost always a multiple of 16? And so on and so forth. And he said, yes, I think that can be proved using the theory of modular forms. And I said, well, I have a two-adic identity which will explain it. So this identity combinatorially explains it in some sense. And actually, you can use this identity to prove that result for small powers of k. But if you want to do it for all powers of k, you need the theory of modular forms. And actually, um, Basil Gordon and Ken Ono proved this. And this appeared in the first issue of the Ramanujan Journal in 1997. But I just wanted to tell you how the combinatorics actually led to this statement about the partitions into distinct parts. Okay, so we are extending Euler by introducing this parameter. Okay. Now, I'm going to mention one other identity as a comparison. An identity which I like to think of as a sort of almost equal in beauty and in importance to Euler's pentagonal numbers theorem is the triangular series identity of Gauss. So this is the product 1 minus q to the 2m divided by 1 minus q to the 2m minus 1 is equal to the sum of the triangular numbers. Now this has an obvious combinatorial interpretation. The left hand side is the generating function for partitions in which the evens cannot repeat, the odds can repeat. And you are taking into account the parity of the number of even parts. And if you classify according to the parity of the number of even parts, you get a perfect split except in the pentagonals where the difference is 1, right? So I call this as the Gauss triangular numbers theorem. Now, just as we viewed the Euler pentagonal numbers theorem as a special case of the Sylvester identity, one can view the Gauss triangular series identity as a special case of another very fundamental identity in the theory of partitions called Lebesgue's identity, which I have written down here. So here, we actually have the product, which is the generating function for partitions in which the evens don't repeat, and this parameter b keeps track of the number of evens. And I have a series. This is product 1 plus bq, 1 plus bq squared, 1 plus bq to the n, denominator this. So if I put b equal to minus 1, these two will cancel, I end up with a triangular series. But again, as, a, as an entering student in the theory of partitions, I looked at this and I said, all that is fine, but what does the Lebesgue identity say as a partition theorem? 
and I found an interpretation which I'm going to describe to you. It's very nice and simple. You take partitions into parts where the events don't repeat. Sitting inside it are partitions into distinct parts as a subset. Now you're going to see the parallel. I now take partitions into distinct parts and now I ask how many gaps there are which are greater than one. See there I looked at partitions where the gap was at least three and then I asked how many gaps are strictly greater than three. Now distinct part means the gap between the parts is greater than or equal to one and now I'm asking how many parts are strictly bigger than one. If there are k parts I count this partition with weight, same formula, 1 plus b to the power of k, b to the number of parts. Okay, so there is a certain parallel development here. And when I sum this over partitions into distinct parts, I end up with this. That, to me, is the partition theorem which